Hey, you're listening to the wrong podcast. Topics today include fears, tears, and jeers. Wrong! What's wrong with you? What's wrong with y'all? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you people? Wrong! You do have to tolerate it. It's my show. Hi, I'm Tim. I'm here to talk about politics, culture, religion, sports, and anything else you're not allowed to talk about in polite company. Issue number one, irrational. I was talking to my daughter, and she used to say that her favorite place to eat, her favorite place to eat, was in the car. She would, like, we'd go out to eat, and she wouldn't eat everything. She'd take it to the car, and she would eat it in the car, and it tasted so much more delicious to her in the car. I don't know why, but she just really loved to nibble in the back seat of the car. And now she's an adult woman and she does not like to eat in the car. And the main reason she does not like to eat in the car is because she is worried that she will choke on her food and then get in a car crash and die. And I would love to tease her about this, but I know that I cannot tease her about this. And the reason I cannot tease her about this is my whole family knows that I have an irrational fear. So here's the deal. Every day, every day when I take a shower, the first thing I do before I take a shower is I put the toilet seat down. And the reason I put a toilet, the the reason I put the toilet seat down is because I am afraid that when I get out of the shower, I'm going to trip and I'm going to hit my head and knock myself unconscious. And I'm worried that if I fall and hit my head and knock myself unconscious, my face will accidentally land in the toilet bowl and I will drown. And so every day I make sure the toilet seat is closed before I get in the shower. And, you know, people make fun of me for this. They're like, this is like that movie Final Destination where it's like this really convoluted way that death just really wants to make sure that it gets you. And no matter how you try to avoid it, you're dead anyways. And here's the deal. Yes, this is an irrational fear. I don't know of anybody that this has happened to, but I don't want to be the guy it does happen to. And... It's not like I'm just like foregoing showers entirely. I've got a very rational, very controlled, very easy thing to do to make sure that this one thing does not happen to me. And that's put the toilet seat down. Not the seat, the whole cover. Seat's not enough. You got to put the cover down. So, dear listener, please join in. Please let me know what your irrational fear is. I've I've exposed myself to you here. <laughs> <laughs> so you do expose yourself to me um write in listen at the wrong podcast.com and let me know what your irrational fear is and you know i can i can repeat it on air without your name i can make it anonymous but you know let me know if you've got a similar fear in your life and you know make sure the toilet seat cover is down That's it. Issue number two, crying. Hey, I don't know if you know this, but Japan is a foreign country. In fact, it's so foreign that to every other country in the world, it is considered a foreign country. It's not just foreign to us. It's foreign to everybody. And, um, you know, Japanese culture is a little bit different in in many, many ways to Americans. Uh, There's things that just don't make sense to us, like vending machines. They're all about the vending machines. They will buy very expensive items out of a vending machine. And, you know, like I've seen those in in the airports and malls when we used to have shopping malls. Like you could buy an iPad and a vending machine. And it's like, that just doesn't seem right. Like, I, I that's expensive. It doesn't seem real, right? Um, although I've seen those Carvana vending machines and I kind of really want to buy a car from that. That seems cool. So that's irrational, right? That doesn't make sense. I'm not willing to spend 500 bucks, but I'm willing to spend, uh, you know, 
tens of thousands of dollars on a car because it comes out of a vending machine. That's weird. But I'm here to talk about Japan. Um, Japan is in the midst of a massive population decline. Like the entire world is soon to be facing this kind of thing. Japan is on the forefront of the population decline. And that's for several reasons. It's for many reasons. But one of the reasons is, and this is just weird to Americans, they are not interested in sex. There's a significant portion of the population is like, wait, I have to do what with somebody else? And then they do what to me? Nope, I'm out. No, thanks. Not interested. It's not that they're not interested in marriage. They're not interested in sex at all. Just, and that seems so weird to Americans because if there's one thing we are obsessed with in America right now, it's severance. Just kidding. Nobody's watching that show because it's on Apple TV and nobody has Apple TV. But if we did have Apple TV, we'd be obsessed with severance. And then after severance, we'd be obsessed with sex. Um, there's, I, I'm, I'm, Bringing all this up because there's this, uh, there's a few other things I need to talk about with Japan. There is this this occupation that's called a do nothing boy. You pay this guy to come to your house and like eat cake with you or go to a movie with you. Like he's got nothing going on, so you just invite him over. You pay him his hourly rate and he'll do whatever with you. Like you need somebody to watch severance or you need somebody to like i don't know no you can't even pay him to set up apple tv on your tv because he's a do nothing boy he just kind of sits there with you um you can also rent an old man i don't know why i need to rent an old man but some people in japan apparently feel the need to rent an old man and um you know kudos to the old men uh, kudos to the best old man in japan that's what i've got to say but the really strange thing is there is this thing called a handsome crying man. Companies hire handsome crying men. And, you know, like in the United States, you, you want to create team building opportunities for your business. So like, you know, you go to a ropes course or you bring somebody in and you do trust falls, that sort of thing. In Japan, they do the same kind of thing. They want to build camaraderie with the team. And so they will hire a handsome crying man. And what the handsome crying man will do is so come to your business and he will cause everybody to cry. He'll like show them sad movies. He'll like talk, talk about things that are sad and like he'll pass you tissues while you cry. And he, he encourages you to cry and he gets people to cry and he has to be handsome to do it. And like, this is a real thing. I'm not making this up. Could I be making this up? No. Hey, it's time. What are the rules? Oh, what are the rules? 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 Okay, here's the rule. You know, whatever CDs you have in your car or your closet or in your entertainment system, you don't need to save those anymore. Go ahead and just throw those out. You can try putting them in your computer if you have got a computer with a CD player and you can try ripping that music onto your computer. But even if you do that, that's not how you're going to listen to it. That's not how we do things here anymore. Nobody does that anymore. Just go ahead and take those CDs, throw them out. You don't need them anymore. Trust me. That's the rule. Remember, I want to know what's wrong with you. What's wrong with you? If you'd like to submit a question, topic, or tell me how I was wrong, you can email me at listen at the wrong podcast.com or submit your comment or your irrational fear at my website, the wrong podcast.com. And help me spread the wrong message. If you like what you hear, share it with your friends. Now it's time for my favorite part of the show I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. Uh, li listener Jason writes in, and he just let me know that he and his son Frank listened to the podcast on the way to school, and that is excellent. Great advice. If you have a teenager who you drive to school, you too should listen to this podcast on the way to school. And Frank, you're a legend. Issue number three. Fraud. 
There is something called pious fraud. Pious fraud is when you decide to lie to somebody, but you do it because you feel like it it's it's justified. Like you've got this ultimate goal, this ultimate goal that makes it justified to lie to somebody. You know, the 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 situation that will come to mind for maybe many people is is your wife says, Do these jeans make me look fat? And the husband will say no. And that's not what I'm talking about. That's being loving. I'm talking about like you develop this whole big massive lie because you need this other thing to happen. And let me just give you a few examples. A few examples. Anthony Fauci is responsible for a pious fraud. So the COVID, the COVID virus breaks out and he sees that the United States does not have enough face masks for all the medical personnel who are going to need them. And he doesn't want a rush in the general public to buy up all the face masks. So he says, hey, don't worry, face masks aren't going to help this kind of thing. And yes, I know the cloth masks don't really work. I'm talking about N95 masks, like the heavy duty, real deal. They do help. He tells everybody, no, 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 don't buy those. Don't worry. It's not going to not going to affect you. You don't need the face mask. Turns out those masks did help. And he felt he had a reason to tell us otherwise. Another thing is that the six feet social distancing is totally made up. There was no science behind it. It was really a political decision made by a bunch of scientists. Like they're like, hey, we got to get people to spread out a little bit more. And somebody's like, okay, well, what's reasonable? And Somebody's like, I don't know. We don't have any testing on this at all. How about 10 feet? And somebody else in the room goes, 10 feet? Like, we will never open the schools again if everybody has to be 10 feet. We can't get all the students in the room if they have to be 10 feet apart from one another. So somebody's like, okay, well, how about six? And they're like, fine, six. We'll, we'll make it work. And then later, like, when after they, they said this, somebody's like, are you kidding? Like, a sneeze can go 30 feet. The, you know, when you sneeze, whatever's in your mouth, it can go 30 feet away. And I heard Fauci say, no, 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 don't worry about this. The virus can't travel 30 feet from a sneeze. Six feet is enough. And, you know, like, not exactly true. Yes, the virus can travel 30 feet from a sneeze. And it does not know to just stop at six feet. Like, six feet is like, like it was a compromise, right? Like, it just like, Hey, if we do this, it will reduce spread. We know it's not going to fix it. We know it's not bulletproof. And he, he, he was stating these things as if they were conclusive scientific fact, and he didn't have the facts with him. And the problem with that is it undermined his own credibility about other things later on. People are like, do we really want to trust this guy? And it's going to hurt later if another pandemic hits us. People are going to be like, I don't care what they say. I don't trust them at all because they weren't honest about six feet and they weren't worry, honest about the, about the face mask. Another example, another example of a pious fraud. There was this young girl, she was 15 at the time. Her name was Tawana Brawley. This happened in the 80s. And Tawana was kidnapped and gang raped by four white men and then a week after she went missing, she was found in a dumpster in a trash bag with dog feces all over her. And Al Sharpton and a number of other people jumped on the story and like they named names, they, they found people to accuse. And the problem with the whole story was it wasn't true. Tawana was a teenage girl who ran away and was worried about her stepfather being angry with her because she ran away. And so she made up this big story about getting raped and kidnapped. And, uh, you know, this story isn't entirely unique. I think there was some woman who was like in the, in the trunk of her car in a Vegas casino parking lot, like similar kind of thing. Like I was kidnapped and no, you just made some really poor choices and are trying to get out of it. Tawana was not raped. She was not raped. Um, that didn't stop Al Sharpton from using the story. 
and spreading the news, like naming names, going after specific individuals for raping Tawana Broadley. And like people were like, no, that guy didn't rape her. I was with him. I'm his alibi. And he's like, oh, so you raped her too. This really happened in the 80s. It was so egregious that Sharpton lost a defamation suit. Do you know how hard it is to lose a defamation suit? He lost it. He's a liar. I can say that he is a liar, and I've got the court record to prove it. And the reason he picked up on the story is because he thought racial injustice was really bad. It's a really bad problem in the United States, and he wanted to fix that. And he was like, this story is too good to be false. We've got to use this story so that we can fight against racial injustice. We have to use this story. And to this day, like there were, somebody followed up with him two years ago. And he's like, no, I don't feel bad about anything I said. And like, I, I, I still think it's true. I, I still think it's all true. And it's gross. It's bad. It's not good. Like, you can't take a story like this and, and say it's actually true without it actually being true, right? Okay, third thing. Well, the reason this is bad, before I get into the third thing, you've all heard the parable of the boy who cried wolf, right? I'm sure it's been assigned to Aesop. I don't know who came up with this story, but the boy, you know, he, he's out tending sheep and, and he cries wolf and everybody runs out to, to, to save the sheep from the wolf and he laughs at them because they all came running. And he does it a second time, they all come running. Third time, he's the wolf actually comes. And he cries, wolf, wolf, and nobody comes and helps him, and the wolf eats him. This is a story we, we all learn in our children childhood, right? In our childhood? No, in our childhood. You don't do this kind of thing because it undermines your own credibility. And sometime in the future, you're really going to need people to believe you. You're really going to want them to believe what you have to say about something that might be crazy and outlandish or scary. I bring this up because we just had a debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. And Kamala Harris, the, the, the moment in the debate was that, that Kamala Harris baited Donald Trump by saying that his rallies were weird and small and people were walking out. And he had to take the bait. Like the moderators asked him a different question. He's like, no, no, no. I need to go back to this thing she says about my, my rallies. And it, like, it was just masterful on her part in in leading this guy exactly to where she wanted him to go. So he starts talking about his rallies and then he goes on this diatribe about how Haitian immigrants in Springfield, Ohio are eating people's dogs and they're eating people's cats and they're eating our pets. And um, the the funniest thing that came out of this was somebody took this clip from The Simpsons and and they edited Donald Trump's remarks in. You can listen to it here. We're the sauce on your sandwich, we're the cheese in your cake. We put the spring in Springfield. They're eating the cats, they're eating the dogs, they're eating the pets in Springfield. Okay, I really feel like I need to weigh in on this issue because there is a better than zero chance that I have actually eaten dog. So I grew up in the Philippines where they eat dog. I'm not allowed to sell dog in the market, but but people like to eat dog on occasion. They don't eat it regularly. It's like a, you know, it's, um, I don't know, kind of like a two or three times a year thing for some people in the Philippines. And let me tell you, the worst smell I've ever experienced in my life is when somebody's cooking dog. And the reason it smells so bad, like have you ever smelled a really wet, dirty dog like, do you know that smell of a wet dog? Okay, imagine that and add to it the smell of burning hair. Like they burn the hair off the dog when they cook it. And it's just, it is the worst smell. So whenever anybody talks about eating dog, like there's a there was a specific moment while I was growing up where I think dog was served to me, like, and they didn't tell me it was dog because it was not good. Um, my parents have both eaten dog and known they were eating dog. They chose to eat dog. They made a choice. So whenever anybody talks about eating dog, I feel like I've, I've, I 
you've got some say in this matter, right? Like you're talking about something that like you might be talking about me. And so Trump is accusing these Haitian immigrants of eating cats and dogs and eating people's pets. And the moderator tried to tried to correct him in the moment, which I don't love. I, I'd prefer the moderator to just ask the questions and have the debate opponent correct the person. I, I think I think fact checking during an interview is a good idea, but in a debate, like just moderate, like just say, okay, your time's up. Here's the new question. Let the opponent correct. That's that's my philosophy on debates. But the moderator, he's like, sir, we've we've checked with the with the city of Springfield, and there are no reports of anybody's pets going disappearing. So where did this come from? Where did he get this idea? that that people are eating cats and dogs. There's two key places. The first is um, over the last year, there's been two calls to 911 from spring in Springfield of people saying, hey, somebody's stealing geese out of the local pond. And in fact, there's a photo of a black man holding a, a goose and um, the, Nobody was able to follow up on the 911 calls. It, it, I don't know the legality of taking a goose from from a pond in Springfield, Ohio, but the photo of the black man carrying the goose was actually somebody he was he was actually cleaning up a dead goose like he worked for the park and he happened to be black. But as far as eating goose goes, I don't know if you know this but People eat goose, like, on purpose. Like, they like it. It's like a Christmas treat kind of thing, right? Like, people eat goose. It's not unusual to hear that somebody's eating a goose. And, like, while we're talking about unusual things people eat, people in Oklahoma and Texas and Arkansas and Louisiana, they eat all kinds of stuff, right? Like, they eat raccoon and possums and squirrel on purpose like i have a friend from east texas he went to a thing where they're like hey we're having a wild game night and it's all you could eat squirrel and possum like that's the thing people do goose wouldn't even be on that menu goose is rather normal and you know like it's probably against the law to take the goose out of the local pond but it's a wild goose and it's also kind of a normal thing to eat if somebody ate a goose and goose are not pets, right? Okay, the second thing is that there's this video that went out last week, and it's a police officer, it's body cam footage. I'm gonna play the video for you here. You're gonna have to use your imagination though, because this is a podcast. Stand up. He said he killed two, two kids. Stand up. Put your hands behind your back. Someone got rubber gloves, she's covering blood. How about you got gloves? You got rubber gloves. So you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have a right to an attorney if can't afford one. Won't be appointed to you at state's expense. You have a right to have that attorney present during any questioning. You have a right to stop answering any questions once they begin. Do you understand your rights? Do you understand? Smile for me. Go like this. Did you eat that cat? Did you eat it? No, why'd you kill it? Get in there. It's ridiculous. She gave her kids to somebody. You know what I mean? She's trying to get herself right So she doesn't have her kids because she was telling people she killed them. No, she did. She never took her kids. Her okay. kids were a family member. She okay. sent them to somebody to try to go get herself together. Mm -hmm. That person she sent them with was fucking beat with. Mm -hmm. They went somewhere else. Okay. So, I don't know. I don't know yet. Judy said they wouldn't. They'll hold the cat as evidence. She destroyed that cat. I told him. I don't like him anymore. As long as I have... She had cat hair on her mouth. As long as I've been a policeman, I've never had a call where someone was eating a cat. Okay, what's happening in this video? This woman is not a Haitian woman and she is not in Springfield, Ohio. 
She is a black woman who was uh, who is a U.S. citizen. I believe she was born and raised in Ohio, and she is very clearly on drugs. And there's no evidence that she actually was eating the cat either. She might have been, because people on drugs do weird things. Remember, like the stories about the homeless people eating each other's faces. Like drugs are bad. Like if we want to talk about this story, let's talk about meth. Let's talk about drugs. This is not an immigration story. This woman is not an immigrant. And we're not even sure she was eating the cat. She she probably killed a cat and she's messed up. But this is not a, a Haitian eating cat story at all. And not in Springfield, Ohio. So this cat dies. Everybody's like, oh, it must be the Haitians in Springfield. And let me tell you about Springfield, why people are talking about Springfield, Ohio. It was a town of about 58,000 people, and there were a couple of factories in the area, and they needed people, and they recruited Haitian immigrants to come work in their factories. And so 15,000 people moved into the town to start working in these factories. And by all accounts, they're doing a great job. But if you have a population of 58,000 people and you increase it by 15,000 people, that is what you call catastrophic growth. Nobody is ready for their town to grow that much that quickly. If you had a town of 100,000 people and 25,000 people moved in, it would be catastrophic growth. Your, your schools wouldn't be able to handle it right away. Your, your hospitals, nobody would be prepared. There would be a spike in real estate prices, right? because that's a lot of people moving in all at once. Nobody's ready for that. So there's problems with this. There are problems. And you know, some of these people don't speak a lot of English. And so the 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 the, the residents of Springfield are kind of weirded out by all these people moving in with new customs and a new language and and every everything feels overrun. And there's this thing throughout history of Jews being accused of eating children. And it's called blood libel. And this thing about the Haitians eating people's pets, it's a form of blood libel. Particularly when you don't have any evidence of it taking place, of it happening at all. Libel means lie. You're lying about somebody. Um, and after Trump said this in the debate, so he he got the story wrong. Like he didn't, he didn't really understand it well enough to be even talking about it at all because it's about a goose and a cat, right? Those are the two pieces of evidence I gave you about where the story came from. And he, the first thing he does is mention the dog. It's, it's dogs are disappearing and then cats. And it wasn't, nobody ever said dogs except for him. And it wasn't happening at all. And because he said this, there are crazy people who are like calling in bomb threats on the schools in Springfield, Ohio, because they hate the Haitian immigrants who are not illegal, by the way. They came here legally and they're, they're, they're working factory jobs in America. And if you don't like all the stuff we're buying from China, you don't like that all this money, all this U.S. dollars are going to China so they can make stuff for us, you need to be glad that manufacturing is happening here in the United States, right? You want the you want people working in those factories. We don't have enough people to work all those jobs. We're going to need to bring in immigrants. So here we are. We've got legal immigrants working in a factory in the United States. This is actually what we want. It's coming with some problems, but it long term, it's what we want, right? So crazy people are calling in bomb threats. Donald Trump did not ask anybody to to make a bomb threat by by any means, but he he bears some responsibility for spreading a rumor that that is not true by any means. He has some responsibility for it. And this is how rumors spread. You'll see a friend on Facebook say something, and you're like, well, you know, like that seems outlandish, but I trust my friend. I've known them for a very long time and they seem trustworthy. So if they're saying it's happening, it must be happening. And I saw two people do this in my own thread. One is a pastor and one is a Christian journalist. And they both like this, this pastor in Springfield, he said, Hey, we're having all kinds of problems. 
with with the rapid growth of our population due to Haitian immigrants and like there are car accidents and 11 year old boy died in a bus accident and cats and dogs or, you know cats are disappearing that that is true that is happening and two people in my own feed were like yep it must be happening because he says it's happening and that's great that he's your friend and you trust him but maybe you should trust him just a little bit less and if this story seems outlandish maybe follow it up make sure that he got his facts right because he didn't get his facts right the boy who died in the car accident died at the hands of a of a elderly white man and nobody's cats are disappearing yes people are talking about cats disappearing that doesn't mean anybody's cat actually disappeared um so don't spread rumors just because you your friend says it's true that's not a good reason to spread it that's that's how that's how things go viral that that people are just like that it confirms your confirmation bias it's somebody you generally trust so yep good enough for me i might as well pass it on and you can't do that if you have a large platform and donald trump has the largest platform in the world 80 million people watch that debate he should not have been spreading this message with the amount of facts he had it in his knowledge bank the, the amount of things he actually knew to be true were zero in this case because he did, wasn't even getting the rumor correct he was adding to the rumor it, himself and then just this weekend on on cnn jd vance was talking to dana bash about this and she he knows this story is false he's the senator from ohio he can talk to anybody he wants about this story and get everything get everything nailed down find out what's actually happening place he he's got the the power and the means and the name to get the facts right about this story and she asked him hey this story isn't true lots of reporters are digging into this there's nothing to this this isn't happening in springfield and this is what jd vance had to say about that just once and for all you again started this in part by saying that at which donald trump repeated on the debate stage that and he didn't say anything about the policies that you're talking about he just said patients are eating dogs and cats can you affirmatively say now that that is a rumor that has no base basis with evidence Dana, the evidence is the first-hand account of my constituents who are telling me that this happened. And by the way, I've been trying to talk about the problems in Springfield for months, and the American media ignored it. There was a congressional hearing just last week of angel moms who lost children because Kamala Harris let criminal migrants into this country who then murdered their children. The American media totally ignored this stuff until Donald Trump and I started talking about cat memes. If I have to, but it if wasn't I just have a to meme, create stories so that the American media actually pays attention to the suffering of the American people, then that's what I'm going to do, Dana, because you guys are completely letting Kamala Harris coast. You had one interview with her. You talk about pushing back against me, Dana. You didn't push back against the fact that she cast the deciding vote on the Inflation Reduction Act, which is why a lot of Americans can't afford food and housing. You just said we that you're creating a story. talking about public policy. Sorry, you just said that you're creating the story. What's that, Dana? You just said that this is a story that you've yes. created. So, so the, the eating dogs we and are cats thing is we, not We are accurate. creating, we are, Dana, it comes from firsthand accounts from my constituents. I say that we're creating a story, meaning we're creating the American media focusing on it. I didn't create 20,000 illegal migrants coming into Springfield thanks to Kamala Harris's policies. Her policies did that, but yes, we created the actual focus that allowed the American media to talk about this story and the suffering caused by Kamala Harris's policies. This is gross. This is gross. This is what Al Sharpton was doing with Tawana Brawley. The story is too good to be false. I'm creating the story to, to amplify a bigger problem I see in the world. And the only way I can get you to pay attention to this problem is to go ahead and keep pushing this story. And I will, I, I will give JD Vance just a little, a little bit of, of a positive reading on what he was saying. He's like, 
hey, I need you to pay attention to the story. He's not saying I created the story out of thin air. He's like, I, but I need the controversy. I need to create the attention on immigration. But man, what a lousy way to put it, that I need to create this story. Like, gross. Like, you have a responsibility, all of you, if you're listening to me, you have the responsibility to not spread false stories. That's, that's different than even not lying. Like, don't lie. Good. We, we all agree. Don't lie. Don't spread false stories because you think they might be true. Do what you can to make sure it's true before you spread the, the message. The louder your megaphone, the greater your responsibility. But I could be wrong. If you think I am, let me know. And let me know why. I had fun and I hope you did too. Bye bye. <laughs>